Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to do the fourth installment of my unique percussion instrument sound effects. So we'll start out here today with some metal instruments that you scrape and play for sound effects. Now, we're not going to do cowbells. We'll do that on a separate video. All right, we're also not going to do break drums and anvils and things like that. Uh, I'm also going to do some different kinds of wooden rattles later and some other sound effects like pop guns and things like that. So uh, this will be kind of a long video. So first we'll start with this metal instrument. It's called a trine. Uh, when I got these they were made in Tennessee. I'm not sure they're still made. And I originally bought these so I could use them on a Broadway show called Wicked. It called for that in the rider. I did not know what that was. I looked it up, found them, and then I bought a couple so I would have them. So this is what the trine sounds like. So there's two sizes, or there were when I was shopping for them. Uh, this is the small size, and this is the large size. It's much bigger, and it sounds like this. Okay, so that's the trine. Put these down. Okay, next is a spring device. Now let's let's talk a little about um, shopping for metal percussion instruments really quickly. Uh, years ago, I used to go into junkyards to find brake drums and all kinds of metal things. Uh, you know, and it was fun. I mean, I'd find stuff for my percussion ensemble at the college, stuff for my own pieces. The problem with that stuff, it was super rusty. Uh, it was actually dangerous looking through those things. You had to have a tetanus shot. Uh, finally, I bought a sandblaster, so when I brought stuff home, I could put it in the compartment and blast the rush, rust off of it. And then I'd paint it with uh, a high gloss W, I mean, um, Rust-Oleum. And that would keep the rust at bay. So I have several brake drums like that, and, and they're great. So just make sure when you do pick those things up, don't run around with a rusty brake drum. It, it, it can be dangerous if, if you get a cut or something like that. And also make sure you get your tetanus shot. So you can find these kinds of things in junkyards. Springs, maybe not a spring like this, but all kinds of different metal things you can scrape. I highly suggest you do that if they'll let you do that. Make friends with the junkyard uh, folks and maybe tell them you'll put their name in a program. That's what I did. <laughs> okay, and I did it too. So, uh, But this is a spring that I really like that Mino makes. That's a little muffled because I got my uh, finger on there. I'll get a connector here. So if you suspend this, it takes up a lot less room than the trine. And actually it goes this way. And a regular spring you'd get from the junkyard or something like that, you'll have to bend it or figure out some way to mount it. So the, the bonus of buying something that's manufactured, it's made to be played like this. All right, so pretty cool sound effects, just metal stuff. If you see that in a score, it just says metal. You can use any one of these things, and a conductor will probably be fine with it because they don't know what they're normally looking at when it says that. Another metal object that's really good for, for effects is this piece of tin, and, you know, it's mounted into this wooden block, and that I can put on a cymbal stand. Okay, so that sounds like this. You can hit it with your hand or a triangle beater or something. You can even shake it. It's 
So it's very theatrical. It sounds really cool. It's kind of like a little crasher. All right? So I call this like a long tin ribbon crasher. But you can make that easily, just with a small, uh, you know, light piece of metal. Okay. Yeah. Let's get to the good stuff here. So um, there's a guy named Pete Engelhart who's been making metal instruments for several decades now. And the first instruments I bought from him were when I was in high school. So it's, it's you know, a long time ago. And those were some cowbells. Um, this is a hiko hiko. It's a Brazilian instrument spelled rico rico, if you look at it. Uh, most of those don't have uh, the kind of springs this has. They'll have the smaller ones, okay? Um, and this is just a beautiful version of that instrument. And usually they're handheld, but this one you can mount. So you can play it just on the springs. It's awesome. So let me get a drumstick here so I don't dent it. So one cool thing about springs is they create a reverberation. Uh, just like the old Fender uh, reverb spring, spring reverb. It would be actual phys physical. So the sound would reverberate through the springs and that would be amplified. So you'd hear that as part of the sound. So one thing about this, you do need to mount it. There's not a lot of good places to hold it. So. So you hear how that spring creates an incredible natural reverberation, all right? Good stuff. Another really cool instrument that Pete makes is the satellite drum, but these particular ones have springs. So he makes them without springs. I have several of these. I love them. They're kind of like tiny little brake drums that you can mount. So. And again, you hear the spring, so. And I was playing it upside down, because I like the way that sounds. You can definitely play it, and it's meant to be played on these rods here. I have a composition that Tap Space just released um, called Heavy Metals. If you want to hear these in action, uh, go to their site and listen to that piece, okay? Uh, I have another one that sounds a little bit different. So they're all a little bit different sounding, okay? So these are satellite drums. You can get them with or without the spring, but these, I'm including these today because they do have the spring. So these are pop guns, uh, an indispensable tool that you'll probably use twice a year, okay? But they are common on Broadway shows and in orchestra um, pieces. The problem with pop guns is they wear out, they break. I have three of these things and I interchange the parts. I also have extra corks. So let me play it for you so you hear what it sounds like. Now, these are the best pop guns, these Acme pop guns, okay? Uh, this one, though, is broken. So you see what happens. Sometimes the, um, the rod in there comes loose. There's a, there's a bolt that connects two parts. So right now, I have an extra. Somehow, we have lost the bolt. I'll find another one. It's not a big deal. But I always buy two of these kinds of things because they wear out. And you never know when they're going to be discontinued. Someone told me that this is discontinued. This instrument, I'm not sure it is. I doubt it is. I'll have to research that. Vic Firth made a pop gun several years ago. This one right here. 
sorry man it's just not cutting it okay there was never any sound to it and it's just pvc pipe and it looks like a homemade project so all right not too bad but compared to this thing it doesn't even hold a candle so if you can find one of these old pop guns i definitely suggest getting it you will need one if you play a lot of shows or if you play with an orchestra all right so that's a pop gun let's put this away All right, let's see what we else we got in the box. This is a Remo, uh, I call it a thunder drum. Now, I've actually never used this live. I just thought it was cool. And I did do a little recording with it. But um, I think they call it, I call it a thunder drum. I think they call it a spring drum is what it is. And you could put a mic right in there and do that. And it sounds really, really interesting. This is something you can make, okay? Uh, these particular things will give you a kind of a waterfall effect. So these are rosewood tines that you can cut on a bandsaw or just use a jigsaw if you're good with it. And then just put them on a piece of wood and get that sound, okay? I have used this for some things. Like if it says wood effect, I'll do that. It's a pretty cool sound. Uh, I don't know what the rubber chicken's doing in there. Uh, okay, so we have, these are called udders. Okay, so they're basically supposed to sound like birds, sparrows maybe, but they look like udders, <laughs> so that's why they call them that. I have two different sets because sometimes you got to play them loud, um, like for bird calls, and they're just not loud enough, so you just got to, and then you get them louder with two, okay? All right, this is a cool instrument called a vibratone. Uh, LP invented this. I love it. It's very, very smart. It's, it's beautiful, actually. Could even play it here. Really nice, well thought out, well made. I like it. Before we go on, let's talk about the spoons real quick. Uh, lots and lots of times you gotta play the spoons. There was a, a show that Steve Martin, oh yeah, it's called Bright Star. I, I had to play some things. They, they do this giant award show, the Jimmy Awards, which is all the Broadway stuff and then they compete in New York. And so we just did part of Bright Star and you know, you have to play spoons, but I was playing drum set at the same time, so it was difficult to do both. So normally I'd play regular spoons, you know, I know how to do that with, with, my, with two spoons on my knee and that, but these made it so easy because I didn't have time to set all that up and pick it up. So basically I just played them like. And they don't sound great unless they're mic'd. They don't sound as good as regular spoons, uh, especially the big, the big giant tablespoons. But I got these a Cracker Barrel, okay? I'm not sure they still sell them, but I'm sure you can get them somewhere on Amazon. They're super handy, uh, especially when you have to be doing other things and you don't have time to grab the spoons and set them and all that stuff, okay? Good. And then the other metal instrument I forgot to tell you about are these eggs. There's some sort of meditation thing. I'm really not sure where I got these or what I would have used them for, but they're pretty neat, so thought I'd show you. <laughs> All right, 
Now we have a metal and wood instrument called a cricket. Believe it or not, this is common. Okay, uh, I use it in shows and also for some orchestra things. There's a, a little metal thing with some ball bearings in there and you can twist that to get a different sound. Lower or higher and lower. Okay, so I guess that would be an old cricket and a young cricket. Okay, um, now let's talk about some rattles. When you see rattle, that could mean a lot of things. Okay, um, but this is a real wooden rattle, so. Okay, there's several kinds of these things. And here's a double wooden rattle. And you can even play grooves with them, so. All right, you can mix and match them. Whatever you might want to do. You just got to kind of practice. It's, it's tricky to play them. So they also make wooden rattles now. Pearl makes these with shakers. Alright, so it's cool. It's a, it's a shaker, it's a rattle, it's everything. Alright, it's a very cool idea, very good invention. Uh, small one, large one. Hats off to Pearl. We will do a separate video on shakers. It's very important. That's such a common instrument. So kielbasas, shakers, and maracas, I'll do that in a separate video.